Ashley Rock reading Nora Roberts' book, Inner Harbor, Chapter 18. It was barely light when Philip crawled out of bed. He didn't bother to moan. What good would it do? Just because he barely slept, his mind was fogged with fatigue and worry, and he had an entire day of backbreaking manual labor ahead of him was no reason to complain. The fact that there was no coffee was a damn good reason to complain. So Bill stirred as he started to dress. You have to go to the boatyard? Yeah. He rolled his tongue over his teeth as he jerked up his legs. Christ! He didn't even have a toothbrush with him. <laughs> Do you want me to order up some breakfast? Coffee? Coffee. <laughs> the word alone was like a siren song in his blood, but he grabbed his shirt. If you ordered coffee, you would have to talk to her. He didn't think it was a smart move to have a conversation when he was in such a foul mood. And why was he in a foul mood? He asked himself, because he had slipped, and she managed to sneak through his legendary defenses while he wasn't looking at him, making fall in love with her. <laughs> I'll get some at home. His voice was clipping and edgy. I have to go back and change anyway. Which is why he was up so damn early. The sheets rushed. Russell, as he sat up, he watched her out of the corner of his eye and reached for a sock. She looked tousled and tumbled and temptively soft. Yeah, she was sneaky, all right. Hitting him over the head like that with her vulnerability. Sobbing in his arms that way and looking so damn hurt and defenseless. Then waking up in the middle of the night and turning into some sort of sex fantasy goddess. Now she was offering him coffee. She had hell of a nerve. I appreciate you staying last night. It helped. <laughs> I'm here to serve, he said shortly. I shot on her bottom lip, it alert and confused by some. It was a difficult day for both of us, I suppose. I'd have been wiser to stay away. I was already a little bit off balance after Gloria's call. <laughs> and then his head shot of what? Gloria called you? Yes, and now Sibyl thought she'd only proven why that was an information best kept herself. He was upset. Everyone's going to be upset. She called you. She called you yesterday. With his temper simmering, he picked up his shoes to examine. And he didn't think that it was worth mentioning before this. I didn't see any point in it. Because her hands couldn't seem to keep still, she pushed at her hair. Tugged at the sheet. I wasn't going to mention it. At all, actually, weren't you? Maybe you forgot momentarily that Seth is my family's responsibility, that we have a right to know if your sister's going to cause more trouble. A need to know, he said, rising as his anger rapidly approached Flashpoint, so that we can protect him. She won't do anything to... How the hell do you know? He exploded with it, routed on her so that she clutched the sheets and white knuckle fist. How can you know? By observing from ten paces back, God damn it, Seville, this is a... This is a fucking exercise. This is life. What the hell did she want? She wanted to shrink, as she always did from anger. She coated her heart and her voice with ice, as she always did to face it. She wanted money, of course. She wanted me to demand it from you, to give her more of myself. She shouted at me, too, and swore at me, just as you are. It happens that Satan ten paces back has put me directly in the middle. I want to know if and when she contacts you again. What did you tell her? So Bill reached for a robe and her hand was steady. I told her that your family would not give her anything and neither would I. That it's spoken with your attorney that it added and would continue to add my weight and influence to see that Seth remains a permanent part of your family. <laughs> That's something then. He muttered frowning at her as she pulled on her robe. It's the least I can do, isn't it? Her tone was frigid, distant and final. Excuse me, she started into the bathroom, shut the door. From where he stood, Phil heard the delicate click of the door. Well, fine, that's just fine. He started at the door, grabbed his jacket, then got the hell out before he made mistake matters any worse than they already were. They didn't get any better. When he ride home to find less than half a cup of coffee, he left in the pot when he discovered midway through the shower that Kevin obviously used most of the hot water. He decided that just made it all perfect. Then he stepped into his room, a towel slung around his hips, and found Seth sitting on the side of it. Definitely perfect. <laughs> hey, Seth eyed him. Suddenly, you're up early. I thought I'd maybe go in for, with you for a couple of hours. <laughs> Philip turned to pull underwear and jeans out of her. <laughs> you aren't working today. You've got your friends coming over later for the party. That's not till this afternoon. Seth, there's time. There's yourself. He expected Philip to be steamed. He had to thank for some bill, didn't he? Seth reminded himself it had been tough to come in here to wait to know he'd have something, have to say something. So he said a single thing that was Muslim. I didn't mean to make her cry. Shit, was all Philip could think. He ached on his jockeys. He wasn't going to get out of this. He didn't. She was just due for a cry, that's all. I guess she's pretty pissed off. No, she's not. Resigned to her now. Philip put on his jeans. Look, woman, 
are hard to understand under the best of circumstances. <laughs> These circumstances pretty much suck. I guess. Maybe it wasn't so steep now. I just sort of remembered some stuff. Seth stared at the scars on Philip's chest because it was easier than looking it into his eyes. Because, well, scars were so cool. And she got whacked out about it and everything. Some people don't know what to do with feelings. He sighed out on the bed side table. Bed beside Seth and was merely ashamed of himself. He blasted some oil right between the eyes because he hadn't known what to do with his feelings. So they cry or they yell or they go off and sulk in a corner. She cares about you, but she doesn't know exactly what to do about it or what you want her to do about it. I don't know. She's she's not like Gloria. His voice rose a bit. She's decent. Ray was decent too, and I've got. They're like relatives, right? So I've got. <laughs> understand it came quickly and squeezed his heart. We've got Ray's eyes. Philip kept his voice. Matter of fact, no one said would believe him if he said it right. The collar and the shape. But that's something that was behind him too. That's something that was decent. You've got a sharp brain just like Sabil. It thinks, it analyzes, it wonders. And under all that, it tries to do what's right. What's well, decent. You've got both of them in you. He nudged his shoulder with his own. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that's my one. It's cool. Okay, scram. But we'll never get going to get out of here. He arrived at the book yard nearly 45 minutes behind. Cam expected to get grief for it. Cam was already at the shaper. Rabbiting, rabbiting the next run of planks. Bruce Springsteen shouted from the radio about his glory days. And the fence Philip turned the volume down. Instantly, Cam's head came up. I can't hear it over the tool unless it's loud. None of us will be able to hear if you keep blasting our ears for hours every day. What? They do say something. Ha uh ha. -huh. Well, we're here for you, aren't we? Cam reached out and switched off. So how's the bill? Don't start on me. Cam angled his head while Seth shifted his gaze from one man to man, man to man, and anticipating the entertainment value of a coin battle. I asked a simple question. She'll survive. Phil snatched up a tool belt. I realize you'd prefer to see her run out of town on a rail, but you have to make do with the fact that I gave her a verbal bashing this morning rather than a physical one. What the hell? Why the hell did you do that? Because she pissed me off, Phil. Because it all pisses me off, especially you. Fine, you want to try for a physical bashing. I'm available, but I asked a goddamn simple question. Cam pulled the board off the shaper and heaved it toward the stack where it landed with a clatter. She already took a punch in the gut yesterday. Why the hell would you add to it this morning? You're defending her. Philip said for till they were nothing. You're defending her after all the shit you handed me over. I've got eyes, don't I? Saw her face last night. What the hell do you take me for? She had a finger in Philip's chest. Anybody who's kicked a woman when she's that tore up ought to have his neck snap. You son of a! Philip's fist was clenched and halfway through the swing before he stopped himself. He would have enjoyed a few bloody rounds, especially since Ethan wasn't there to break it up, but not when he was the one who deserved to be bloodied. He unclenched his fist, spreading his fingers. He turned away to try to find some control. He saw Seth watching him with dark, interested eyes and said, Don't you start. I didn't say a word. Look, I took care of her, okay? He dragged a hand through his hair and aimed his vacillation at both of them. I let her cry it out, patted her hand. I dumped her into a hot bath, sucked her in bed. I stayed with her. Maybe I got an hour's sleep out of the deal, so I'm feeling just a little testy right now. Why'd you yell at her? Said one. Okay. He took a steady breath, pressed his fingers to his tired eyes. This morning she told me that Gloria had called you. I called her yesterday. Maybe I overacted, but damn it, she should have told us. What did she want? Seth's lips had gone white. Instinctively, Cam stepped over and laid a hand on his shoulder. Don't let her spook you, kid. You're beyond that now. What's the deal? He demanded of Philip. I didn't get details. I was too busy blasting Seville for not telling me sooner. Just of it was money. Philip shifted his gaze to Seth, spoke directly. She told Gloria to kiss ass. No money, no nothing, no how. She told her she'd be into the lawyer and was making sure you stayed just where you are. Your hands no bush over. Camp said easily, giving Seth's shoulders a good quick squeeze. Quick squeeze. She's got the spine. Yeah, Seth straightened his own. She's okay. Your brother over there. Camp continued to nod toward Philip. He's an asshole. But the rest of us have sense enough to know that Sibyl didn't want to bring up the phone call yesterday because it was a party. She didn't want anybody to get upset. A guy doesn't turn 11 every day. So I screwed up, muttered to herself. Philip grabbed a plank, prepared to beat out his frustrations with damn wood. I'll fix it. 
Sabil needed to do some fixing of her own. It had taken her most of the day to work up both the courage and the plan. She pulled into the Quinn driveway just after four and was relieved not to see Philip's ship, Jeep. He'd be at the boat yard for another hour at least. She calculated Seth would be with him as it was Saturday night. They would most likely stop on the way home, pick up some takeout. It wasn't their pattern. It was their pattern, and she knew her behavior and patterns, even if she didn't seem to be able to fully connect with the people who were doing the behaving. Ten paces back, she thought, and was hurt all over again. Annoyed, she ordered herself out of the car. She would do what she had come to do. It should take no more than fifty minutes to apologize Santa for the apology to be accepted, at least oh, outwardly. She would explain about the call from Gloria in detail so that it could be documented. Then she would leave. She would be back at her hotel, buried in her work, long before Philip arrived on the scene. She knocked briskly on the door. It's open, came from. I'd rather kill myself than get up. Where Lisa Bill reached for the nap, hesitated, then opened the door. All she could do was stare. The Quinn living room was usually cluttered, always appeared lived in, but just now it appeared to have been lived in by a rampaging platoon of insane elves. Paper plates, plastic cups, several of them dumped or spilled, littered the floor on the table. Small plastic men were strewn everywhere as if war had been waged, and the casualties were horrendous. Obviously, obviously fatal accidents had taken place with model cars and trucks. Shreds of wrapping paper were sprinkled over all like confetti on particularly wild New Year's Eve. Spot on a chair, scurried the damage was Anna. Her hair was, her hair was in her face, and her face was pale. Oh, great! She muttered, turning to narrow eyes. Said to Bill, "Now she shows up. I'm, I'm sorry. Easy for you to say. I just spent two and a half hours battling ten eleven-year-old boys. No." Not boys, she corrected between her teeth. Animals, beasts, spawns of Satan. I just sent Grace home with orders to lie down. I'm afraid this experience might affect the baby. He could be born a mutant. The children's party, Sibyl remembered. Her dazzled eyes scanned in the room. She forgot. It's over. It will never be over. I will wake up at night for the rest of my life screaming till they cart me off to a padded room. I had ice cream in my hair. There's some sort of mass on the kitchen table. I'm afraid to go in there. I think it moved. Three boys managed to fall in the water and had to be dragged out, then dried off. They'll probably catch pneumonia and will be sued. One of those creatures who disguised himself as a young boy ate approximately 65 pieces of cake. They got into my car. I don't know how he got by me. They're like lightning. It produced the throw up. Oh, dear. Sibyl knew it wasn't a laughing matter. It shocked her to realize that her stomach muscles were coming. I'm so sorry. Can I help you? I clean up. No, I'm not touching any of it. Those men, the one who claims to be my husband and his idiot brothers, they're going to do it. They're going to scrub and clean and wipe and shovel. They're going to do it all. They knew, she said in a mission room, they knew what a boy's birthday party would mean. How was I to know what they did? And they hid themselves way down in that boatyard using that lame excuse about contract deadlines. They left me and Grace alone with this, this unspeakable day. She shut her Oh, the horror! Anna was silent for a moment, her eyes still closed. Go ahead. You can laugh. I'm too weak to get up and belt you. <laughs> you worked so hard to do this for Seth. It had the time of, he had the time of his life. Anna's lips curved as she opened her eyes. And since I'm going to make Cam and his brothers clean it up, I'm feeling pretty good about it all at all. How are you? I'm fine. I came to apologize for last night. Apologize for what? The question threw her off rhythm. She was already running behind schedule, she thought, distracted by the chaos and Anna's rambling monologue. Spill cleared her throat and began, For last night, it was rude of me to leave without thanking you for. Sibyl, I'm too tired to listen to nonsense. You weren't rude. You had nothing to apologize for. And you'll annoy me if you keep this up. You were upset and you had a perfect right to be. And that blue smell careful peach prepares speech all to hell. I honestly don't understand why people in this family won't listen to me, much less accept a sincere apology for regrettable behavior. Boy, if that's the tone you use when you lecture, Anna observed with admiration, your audience must sit at attention. But to answer your question, I suppose we don't because we often indulge in what we could term be termed regrettable behavior ourselves. I'd ask you to sit down, but those are really lovely sacks, and I have no idea what nasty surprises there are on any of those cushions. <laughs> I don't intend to stay. You could, you couldn't see your face, Anna said more gently. When he looked up at you, when he told you what he remembered, but I could see it, Sibyl, and I could see it was a great deal more than duty or responsibility or a valid attempt to do what was right that brought you here. Must have crushed you when she took him away all those years ago. 
I can't do this again. The bird of tears called the backwards. I can't do this again. You don't have to anymore. I just want you to know, I understand. In my work, I see so many damaged people, battered women, abused children, men who are at the end of their ropes. The elderly were so bitterly displaced. I care, Sibyl. I care about every one of them who came come to me for help. She sighed a little further. But in order to help them, I have to hold back of myself myself back, be objective, realistic, practical. If I threw all my emotions into every one of my cases, I couldn't do my job. I'd burn out, burn up. I understand the need for a little distance. Yes, the painful tension drained out of spill shoulder. Of course you do. It was different with Seth, Henry went on. Right from the start, first minute, everything about him pulled at me. I couldn't stop it. I tried, but I couldn't. I thought about that, and I believe sincerely that my feelings for him was there, just there, even before I met him. We were meant to be part of each other's family. He was meant to be part of this family, and this family was meant to be mine. <laughs> Risking the consequences, Billy's he's down on the arm of his I wanted to tell you, you're so good with him, you and Grace. You're so good for him. The relationship he has with his brothers is wonderful, and it's vital. That strong male influence is important for a boy. But the female, what you and Grace give him, is just as vital. You have something to give him, too. He's outside, Anna told her, drolling over his boat. I don't want to upset him. I really have to go. Running away last night was understandable and acceptable. Anna's gaze was direct, level challenge. Running round now, running now, is it? You must be very good at your job, Sibyl said after a minute. I'm damn good at it. Go talk to him. If I manage to get out of this chair in this lifetime, I'll put some fresh coffee on. It wasn't easy, but then Sibyl supposed it wasn't meant to be. Crossing that lawn toward the boy who sat in the pretty little boat, so obviously dreaming off fast sails. Sibyl swallowed first and alerted, raced toward her barking. She braced herself and put a hand out. Hoping to ward him off, Fuller skimmed his head under it, turning the defense gesture into a stroke. His fur was so soft and warm, his eyes so adoring, his face so fittingly silly that she relaxed and smiled. You really are foolish, aren't you? He sat, batting her, batting at her with his paw until she took it and shook. Satisfied, he raced that back toward the boat where Seth watched him winning. Hi. He stayed where he was, pulling on the line, making the small triangle of a sail sway. Hello. Have you taken it out yet? Nah. Anna wouldn't let me and any of the guys go out in her to any of the guys go out in her today, he jerked his arm. Like we drown or something. <laughs> but you had a good time at your party? It was cool. Anna's a little pissed. He stopped and looked toward the house. She really hated it when he he's more. She's pretty steamed about Jake barfing in her car, so I figured I'd hang out here till she levels. That's pretty that's probably very sensible. Then Silas felt heavy as they both looked out over the water and wondered what was to do. So Bill braced herself. Seth, I didn't say goodbye to you last night. I shouldn't have left the way I did. It's okay, he shrugged. I didn't think you remembered me or any other time you stayed with me in New York. I thought I made it up. It was too hard to sit in the boat and look so far up. He climbed out and sat on the deck to dangle his leg. Sometimes I dream about some of it, like the stuffed dog and stuff. Yours? She murmured. Yeah, that's pretty lame. She didn't talk about you or anything, so I thought I just made it up. Sometimes, she took the wrist and stepped on. Sometimes it was almost like that for me, too. I still have the dog. You kept it? It was all I had left of you. You mattered to me. I know it may not seem like that now, but you did. I didn't want you to go. Because I, I didn't want to. Because I was hurt. Partially. She had to be honest and give him that. At least, she was never kind, Seth. Something was twisted in her. It seemed that she could never be happy unless the people closest to her weren't. I didn't want her back in my life. I planned to give her a day or two, then arrange to have the two of you move to a shelter. That way I would fulfill my family obligation and protect my own lifestyle. But you didn't. I made excuses at first, just one night, one more night, then I admitted that I was letting her stay because I wanted to keep you there. If I found her a job, helped her get an apartment, worked with her to put her life back together, I could keep you close. I never had, you were the, she ordered herself to take one cleansy breath and just say, You loved me, the first person who ever did. You loved me. You're the first person who ever did. I didn't want to lose that. When I did, pull myself back, right back to where I'd been before you came. I was thinking much more of myself than of you. I'd like to make it up for that a little. I think it of you now. He looked away from her. Down at the feet, he was kicking back and forth. Over. Phil said how she called, and you told her to kiss ass. Not precisely in those words. But 
That's what you meant, right? I guess it was. She knew. Yes. You guys got the same mother, right? But like different fathers. Yes, that's right. Do you know who my father was? I never met him. No. No, I mean, do you know who he was? He was always making up different guys and names and shit and stuff. He cried. I just wondered that's all. I only know his name was Jeremy DeLotner. They weren't married long and married. His case flew back up. She never got married. She was just BSing you. Now, I saw the marriage license. She had it with her when she came to New York. She thought I could help her track him down and sue him for child support. He considered a moment. So, the possible. Maybe. It doesn't matter. I figured she just took the name from some guy she lived with somewhere. If he got hooked up with her, he must have been a loser. I could arrange for a search. I'm sure we could locate him if it would take some time. I don't want that. There wasn't any panic in his voice, just disinterest. I was just wondering if you knew him, that's all. I got a family now. He lifted his arm as foolish nuzzled into his armpit, wrapped around the dog's neck. Yes, you do. It came a little. She started to rise. She hesitated, her eye drawn toward a flash of white. She saw the harem soar gliding over the water, just at the edge of the trees. Then it was gone, around the bend, leaving barely a ripple in the air. A lovely thing, she thought. A lovely spot. A harbor for troubled souls. For young boys who only needed a chance to become men. Perhaps she couldn't thank Ray and Stella Quinn for what they'd done here, but she could show her gratitude by stepping aside now and letting their sons finish the job with that. Well, I should go. That our stuff you gave me, it's really great. I'm glad you like it. You have talent. Fooled around some with the charcoal last night. She has to say, oh, I'm not getting it right. He twisted his head to look up at her. It's a lot different than a pencil. Maybe you could show me how to do it. She started, stared hard over the water because she knew he wasn't asking. He was offering. Now it seems she was given a chance and a choice. Yes, I could show you. Now? Yes, she could concentrate on keeping her voice even. I could show you now. Cool. End of chapter 18.